Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It's time to once again talk about AI. Isn't AI very fun? What's well, a great topic. I always enjoy talking about AI because basically people just make up stuff and then it becomes reality. That's how all of this stuff works. So, uh, today it's in reference to War Thunder. And of course, it is the idea that War Thunder is being used as a template uh, to train AIs in China to be able to identify aircraft and also identify where they're going, what they're doing, and how to target them. This is uh, basically coming from a post which is uh, from an interesting website, the SCMP. Now, the SCMP specifically is the South China Morning Post, and it's one of those places which, let's just say, has a dubious rep uh, reputation in terms of whether it's authentic or whether it isn't. Depending on who you ask, it's either propaganda for the Chinese Communist Party or literally it's a psyop. So it's just all over the place, right? And this is uh, just like stuff like the Daily Mail or stuff like the Telegraph or even stuff like even, uh, I don't know, Rebel News in uh, Canada or Rebel Media or something like CBC. It's all going to have its own biases. It's all going to be a bit all over the place. And this specific article goes through a new AI that is being um, developed at a research institute, uh, specifically the Northwest Institute of Mechanical and Electrical Engineering, and uh, the AI itself is called the Red Eye, and it's yeah basically designed for targeting uh, planes and seeing what is going on. Unfortunately, the article is behind a paywall, and also, if you actually want to go and see the full-on article, uh, or not the article, sorry, but the issue of the journal, which is uh, the Journal of Gun Launch and Control, the study is actually in it, and the problem with it is it's behind two other paywalls, and in order to get access to it, you have to pay stupid amounts of money, which is why I generally dislike journal stuff, and why I left the university system instead of, you know, pursuing all of that, and went straight into the private sector because I'm so sick of information being behind paywalls. It's one of the worst things that happens for societies. So when it comes to the article itself, it's written by a guy called Stephen Chen, who is from Beijing, and he is basically the uh, senior science news editor for uh, the website. And he's been there for a very long time, 19 years overall. And he basically talks about all sciencey things and a lot of his posts honestly read like they have been written by AI. And this one is no different. In a breakthrough set to reshape the future of air combat, Chinese researchers claim to have nullified humanity's final tactical advantage over artificial intelligence in dogfights, the ability to outmaneuver algorithms through unpredictable high-intensity aerial acrobatics. Detailed in a study published last year, the method combines advanced infrared imaging with AI-driven predictive modeling to anticipate an opponent's moves by detecting subtle wingtail movements. It is a development that could render even the most agile fighter jets, such as the US-made F-15, ah yes, the F-15 from the 80s, virtually defenseless, according to the team of scientists from the Northwest Institute of Mechanical and Electrical Engineering based in the northwest city of Zhenyang, which is a key research arm of Narinko, China's biggest arms supplier. Published in the December issue of Journal of Gun Launch and Control, the study addresses a critical flaw in existing AI air combat systems, their reliance on trajectory-based predictions, which struggle to account for sudden, nonlinear maneuvers executed by human pilots. The Chinese team, led by senior engineer Lin Ziwei, bypassed this limitation by focusing on the physical mechanic mechanics of enemy aircraft. Using a modified YOLO V8, which is a fantastic name, neural network, the system analyzes infrared imagery to detect millimeter-level deformations in an opponent's control surfaces, such as the F-15's 1.5-meter rudder or 2-meter elevator during flight. So instead of looking at the pilot and its actions, basically what the AI does is it computes all the time instantaneously 
what the maximum angles of the plane can do with its current speed, its current trajectory, and then predicts where it's going to go from there. So that is pretty much how it works. Now, the reason why people think it's using uh, War Thunder is because if you have a look at the images that it uses, the images specifically are of an F-15. And also at the same time, it looks very, very similar to the F-15 that is in War Thunder and also no idea where else you would actually get these images from when it comes to other things. The radar signature is also looking exactly like War Thunder 2, and everything just looks like War Thunder. So the idea is, is allegedly, of course, because none of this is definite, they could literally just be using something else, the idea is they are using War Thunder to train their AI in order to detect flight patterns and also work out where vehicles are going to end up. And the reason why they're using the F-15 instead of a more modern aircraft, which, you know, would still be in service mostly with America, is because the F-15 is the one in War Thunder. <laughs> it's not, you know, one which is put in. Maybe now the F-18 is getting added, and maybe the F-22 in the future, maybe what we'll see is an update to these articles and saying the Red AI has figured out how to maneuver when it comes to uh when it comes to these aircraft now it is not a uh, long shot that this is actually something that's happening. We know in the past that many militaries have actually used War Thunder and also used games like DCS in forms of training uh, when it comes to formation flying or when it comes to uh, general strategic positioning of ground vehicles. There was actually some articles that the American Armed Forces were using these things to be able to train their pilots, not just when it comes to uh, actually you know how the vehicles are supposed to fly or how they're supposed to move, but more in the idea of, once again, how to set up strategically in an area and also uh, getting the commands correct and working on how to communicate. So that is something that is obviously happening. It's also happened in many other militaries uh, in the past because it turns out video games are a pretty good medium to be able to cooperate, bring people together, and also work out stuff. Now, the fact that this is using for something slightly different, actually training an AI to actually work out where an aircraft is going to end up, it's kind of interesting. The other part of it as well is, are they actually using uh, match footage? I highly doubt it. Um, instead, I think they're probably using more test flight or custom uh, stuff because it just seems kind of crazy if they're doing that uh, because, of course, War Thunder pilots are nothing like real-life pilots, so therefore predicting what they're doing, no wonder they're having an issue with it. They're probably wondering why this guy ran into the ground, this guy ran into a tree, this guy decided to run straight into him, and all, all of these crazy things going on. So it wouldn't be a surprise if everything was skew with. But the main thing is this is kind of what happens when you model stuff very realistically. People are going to use it for their own means, even if you model it unrealistically. Like, they're, they're still going to use it to be able to try and train AI. AI is one of those things which is a buzzword nowadays, but also at the same time is becoming very scary. There was some videos that I was watching recently from a software developer from Canada and also one from the US where they actually were putting in their insurance claims after visiting the doctor uh, for their yearly physical for their job and it got denied. And it turned out the reason it got denied is because an AI had denied it. So when she actually talked to customer support and talked to a human, the human said to her, what you have to do is you have to just try again in a few days and the AI might actually approve the thing. But the fact that that decision is being left up to an AI, a a machine learning AI, which if it keeps learning the wrong thing to do, or, you know, then it's just going to get worse and worse. And the fact that the people behind it are saying that, where just wait a few days and try again, and it'll probably go through, instead of just fixing the issue, shows there is a problem here. I don't know if any of you have dealt with like customer support recently, or dealt with anything to do with what would be classed as, I suppose, yeah, customer support. It's just been a mess. Like, it's awful right now trying to deal with anything Thing because people are trying to use these models to actually fix stuff and it just doesn't work. One of the funny things, at least to me with AI, one of the best pieces of information is uh, trying to get an AI to actually tell you how many R's are in the word strawberry. Because the way that AI works, just like pretty much everything else, is 
through keywords. So it can't actually tell you how many R's are in the word strawberry because it can't read it as individual letters. So it's just a mess that, that they're actually using it at this level to do all of these different things. And it's just becoming a reliant thing in jobs and many other areas. And to see War Thunder and video games and general stuff get caught up in this should not be a surprise. I mean, even Gaijin themselves are definitely using certain aspects of it in certain areas of the game to improve little areas, even if it is stuff like DLSS, or even if it is stuff through graphics cards technology. The whole thing about the 5000 series of uh, good old NVIDIA is all about AI improvements, and let's see how that goes. Maybe instead of focusing on AI improvements, maybe they could actually just build some of the cards instead. Wouldn't that be grand? Anyway, that's your news for the day. Look after yourselves, peace be with you, and I'll see you soon. I'd just like to thank GMG Smiley, CD Beans, Chieftain Mike, EMN3 Galaxy, Tulio Pontecovo, Brendan Quinn, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Wartinder, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Ozzy Panza, Alan Hacker, Liam Shear, Opium Prime, Lafouche, Sem Aslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R. for supporting the channel.